Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're starting to bring 2016 to a quick end. My name is Harry Brelsford. I'm the founder of SMB Nation. This is the regular Thursday weekly webinar. Um, some of you uh, attended a Tuesday webinar. Thank you very much. This is the Thursday webinar. We'll get to that in just a moment. A little bit of housekeeping. Be sure to use the questions feature to ask your questions during the webinar. I'll be moderating those. And if the questions are contextual to the slide, we'll ask them at that time. If the questions are better handled later at the end of the presentation, uh, please do not be offended, but, but I'll ask the questions at that time. Um, we have a webinar next Thursday. I always like to kind of give you the forward-looking statements. So we have a webinar next Thursday at noon, the 22nd. It's our fourth quarter MSP analyst report. You'll be getting information shortly. Jenny's actually loading it all up a little bit later today, and we'll be getting the announcement out to you. So we look forward to seeing you then. And that is, in fact, our last, our last webinar of the year. And then stay tuned. Uh, as I've alluded to in the past couple of webinars, we are deep, 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 deep into planning. Uh, for the what the workshop tour will be next year. As you know, we typically do about 20 workshops a year. And we're hearing it all, folks. And then uh, I, I, I'll just leave you with this. We're hearing it all. We're hearing uh, IoT. Some of you would be interested in IoT. So some topics that are going to be perhaps a little bit different than the traditional SMB Nation conversation. And uh, with that said, let's let's jump into it for for today, uh, a startup, Enigma, um, very impressive, Creel. Uh, we've become fast friends, and you're an entrepreneur, sir. We're going to talk about making and saving money with infrastructure as a service. Uh, sir, are you, are you ready to rock over there? All good? I certainly am, Harry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's do it. All right, excellent. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen sure. here. and. Um, yeah, and just uh, ping me if you see any issues or hear of any issues, and um, I'll, I'll be sure to correct them. Um, so thank you very much, Harry, for the introductions. My name is Kirill Bensonov. <clears throat> I've been in the MSP uh, space in general for the past uh, 10 or so years. I was at a uh, service provider prior to founding Unigma, and Unigma actually came out as, a, uh, <clears throat> as something the service provider needed. So uh, my previous life, we, we were uh, doing a lot in the clouds and AWS, we, um, and we were uh, one of earliest AWS partners in the New England area, started working with Microsoft Azure. Uh, and so when we got to a point where we uh, had a, uh, more, a, little, a handful or so of, of customers, we said, hey, we need a product. We need something to help us manage, to help us run this managed cloud services business. And so that's how the idea for Unigma was born. But um, I'll go through a little bit and, and uh, answer any questions after the, after the webinar. And I hope you find it enjoyable. So today, we'll talk a little bit about the MSP business model. We'll talk about what is hybrid and what is public cloud. Some of you guys may or may not know some of this already. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about who the IAS market leaders are, and then we'll most importantly talk about how do we build recurring revenue in the cloud. And we'll talk about pain points, tools, and what the next steps are for, for everyone here. Um, so, so essentially, what is happening to the traditional managed services business model? Um, managed services and proactive IT has been around for, for a little bit over a decade. Um, and at this stage, we think it's starting to see transformation and uh, disruption. Um, <clears throat> I think it was uh, Mark Andreessen that coined the phrase, software is eating the world. Well, I'm, I'm starting to think it's starting to eat managed services as well um, as other businesses. Software is really changing the way things are, are being done all over the place. Um, at Google I.O. conference this year, Google announced that Android, Android apps will be available on Chrome OS. Uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, one-click, easy-to-install applications will be available on people's desktops. Uh, that means that managed services will be uh, less and less needed on the desktop because the users will be able to do it themselves for the most part. Um, another point, Office 365, that's removing Exchange servers from your management. Uh, companies like Xero and QuickBooks Online are removing accounting applications from your management. A lot of other software as a service that's uh, essentially disrupting and eating uh, the business that we all have been running. All right, let's talk about who are the major infrastructure as a service. That's actually what IAS stands for, for those that don't know. Uh, who are the major infrastructure as a service cloud players today? 
Uh, we have Amazon Web Services, and I'm sure most of you guys know this already, but <clears throat> just a quick recap, and I uh, hope to give you some new information about their market share and why they're good and, or not. So AWS, uh, about 30% of the public cloud market share in all. If you look at IAS, it's over 68%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they were first to market. They have the most mature services, and they are, from what I hear, the most developer-friendly cloud out there. Uh, they're growing at about 60% year over year. Uh, they've actually announced they reached a 10 billion uh, annual run rate mark not too long ago, and they are a profitable business of Amazon's, which is probably unlike many other of their business units. Microsoft Azure, we obviously know who that is as well. That is Microsoft Infrastructure as a Service Cloud, uh, about 9% of the market. Fastest growing out of all of these players. Uh, and is very channel friendly. So uh, obviously Microsoft's model uh, for the most part is to sell via a partner. <clears throat> That's why many of us are here. Um, and they continue to have that model with Microsoft Azure. Over 100% year over year growth. Uh, it is my personal opinion of, and, and not of anyone else's uh, uh, technically, but my personal opinion is that over the next five years, Microsoft's going to either remove or make on-premise software prohibitively expensive for the SMB. Uh, they will want everyone to be in a SaaS model like Office 365 or be in a Microsoft Azure cloud. Uh, Google, we all know the name, we use them for search. They have their own infrastructure as a service cloud offering. Uh, they went live with it a few years ago. We recently hired uh, the original founder of VMware or one of the original founders of VMware to run that unit. Uh, so they're doing a lot with it. They've invested a lot, but they're fairly far behind the pack. Uh, IBM Software, about 7% of the market share. They're very enterprise friendly. They recently partnered with VMware to offer bare metal uh, VMware hosting uh, in their data centers. And they have Bluemix. I believe they're actually rebranding software to Bluemix. So Bluemix will be their brand for all of their uh, developer, IoT, uh, platform, cloud foundry. We actually use Bluemix for our, uh, for our platform infrastructure as well as AWS. <clears throat> um, so they're very enterprise friendly. And then there's others, um, you know, a bunch of other cloud players out there. Um, Hybrid and private cloud, do they still matter? Um, so what is, uh, what is private cloud or hybrid cloud? Hybrid cloud computing environment is a mix of on-prem private and third-party public services uh, with orchestration between the platforms. Uh, and companies like OpenStack and VMware are market leaders. Azure Stack, I don't know where it's at now. I think it's in some, in some kind of preview, but it's coming soon. That'll be the, the private cloud uh, offering from Microsoft uh, and Amazon. Uh, is partnered with VMware to a degree, and I wouldn't be surprised if they release some kind of private cloud uh, software as well, because the enterprises demand it. However, is it a viable uh, is it a viable uh, infrastructure play down the road? Um, I think it's going to have its place. There's always going to be compliance and things like that that people need to address. But uh, for the SMB uh, space or the small medium business. Uh, it, it may not be because it takes a lot of resources to build that private cloud and to maintain it. So there's a lot that goes into it. Um, how different are managed services in the cloud versus on-premise? So I get asked that a lot. In my opinion, they're not that different, but there are some key differences. So uh, it is essentially delivering the same end result that people have been doing on-premise, but now applying it to a slightly different model. Um, Public cloud is the new servers, basically. So it's still continuing to manage servers. It's continuing to manage services as, as, along the lines of servers as well. Um, I believe, and here at Unigma, this is our, our mission because we're a multi-cloud, uh, we think that uh, MSPs should have uh, expertise in two or more public clouds. Because if you think of it, if uh, public clouds are the new servers, then uh, AWS and Microsoft are the new IBM or the new HP or the new Dell. Um, so, so there's a lot of similarities there as well. Um, how do we add new recurring revenue streams in the cloud? Good question. Um, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of new services that people could do to monetize themselves uh, in public cloud. So let's, uh, let's start at the top. Cloud migrations. Migrate on-prem workloads to public clouds. So that's essentially taking, there's a couple of different models. Most common one is called lift and shift. So that's taking servers that are running in someone's uh, data center, uh, in someone's closet, wherever they may be, and moving them to a infrastructure as a service cloud. Uh, that's a 
business that uh, some companies out there have built their whole business model on, uh, raised money for, et cetera. So there's still a ton of opportunity there doing cloud migrations. If you develop a practice, it could run like a well-oiled machine. Uh, cloud performance monitoring, so that's essentially providing uh, um, monitoring and uh, reporting, alerting, uh, all that stuff that people have been doing on-premise for, for years, but doing it in the cloud. Because some of the cloud services are quite different, they don't have an operating system, they're just a service, like a database in the, serv in the cloud or, or a uh, storage or, uh, you know, most of the things that running in the cloud run as a service. There is nowhere to install an agent, uh, but you can monitor them via API. That's the primary way of monitoring and doing things in the cloud is using API, and I'll show you how that can be done a little bit later. Uh, cloud service brokerage, so that's essentially selling Azure, selling AWS, selling Google, or potentially other cloud uh, infrastructures as well. So I'll talk about the different programs uh, for a second. Um, Microsoft has the best program, in my opinion, uh, for partners. CSP, they have two different levels, uh, CSP Direct, CSP Indirect. Direct means you purchase cloud services or Office 365 directly from Microsoft uh, at the steepest discount. Indirect means you would purchase the services through a distrib distributor, someone like an Ingram Micro or a Tech Data or a Synex or someone like that. Um, Amazon Web Services has a reseller program, so you have to become a reseller. There are certain things one has to do, a certain minimum uh, threshold one has to meet to become a, an AWS reseller and then uh, AWS provides a margin off of their retail cost to those resellers. Uh, Google I believe has a program as well, I'm not too intimately familiar but they have a partner program with uh, margin opportunities as well. Um, so the next item is application development. Straightforward, build websites, build applications, run them in the cloud and then provide what's most important is managed services. That's the last, last item on the list. Uh, so that's essentially end-to-end -end management in the cloud. So that's what a lot of folks that are on the call do, uh, and they can really translate what they've been doing on-premise to the cloud. So what are pain points of managed cloud services? There's a, there's a few things that are different from what people are used to doing on-premise, okay? There's billing. So how does one bill? Let's say that uh, an MSP resells, uh, AWS or resells uh, Azure or resells Google. How does one bill uh, for that resold cloud infrastructure? Because those vendors don't make it easy. You can't generate a bill. You can't send the bill directly from uh, that cloud uh, uh, from the cloud provider themselves. You can't put a, a, a line item in for your managed services. You can't mark it up, etc. So they don't make it very easy. So that's definitely a pain point. Service desk. You know how do we how do we provide service desk? How do we uh, uh, how do we monetize the help desk? It, it, you know, there are some similarities with on-premise, but it is a pain point. Uh, there has to be some new uh, new skill set and uh, learned, etc. Monitoring. So, how do we monitor the platform? How do we monitor the API? How do we monitor inside the operating system? And most importantly, cost management. How do we make sure because public cloud uh, it bills you by the hour, by the minute in some cases. How do we make sure that our customers are paying the least amount of money possible? Um, so let's talk about Unigma and some other tools and what could be the next steps. Uh, so Unigma is a end-to-end um, -end unified cloud management tool. Uh, so we essentially provide a uh, performance monitoring, uh, performance and health monitoring. So you can uh, monitor the public clouds on top of the agents that people install inside the operating system using software like Kaseya. Um, or, or others, I mean, it doesn't really matter to us. We complement that software and we provide API level performance monitoring. So boom, that ticks off uh, one of the pain points right there. Uh, cost management and billing. So I talked about that just now, major pain point. How do we make sure that everyone is paying the least amount of money they possibly can when using AWS, Azure, Google, or any other public cloud? Unigma does that for you. We have a rules-based engine and we help we help MSPs analyze and lower their customers' spend uh, in AWS, Azure, and Google. We work with these three right now, but um, soon to work with others as well. Billing, how do we help you bill for that cloud? If you're a CSP, if you're a, uh, an AWS reseller, we help you set up, bill, provide a markup, and essentially earn a margin uh, on your cloud uh, um, for, your, for your resold cloud infrastructure. And we have automation, so we help you save time so that 
uh, your techs, your engineers don't need to learn all the complicated control panels, don't need to configure uh, things in, in many places. They come into Unigma and they could use the product right out of the box. It's a very simple to use control panel uh, and I'll show you in a second what it looks like at a high level. Um, what are next steps? Okay, so I'm not sure where you guys are at as far as your uh, de de uh, developing a cloud service, but I'd highly recommend everyone thinks about it if they haven't yet. So aside from reselling Office 365, which is um, which is great, I mean there's margins there, there's work there right now, but start thinking about infrastructure as a service as well. Uh, how do you position your cloud services? Do you need to continue to sell hardware, or could you move that that uh, hardware offsite to a uh, to a public cloud and by the way the margins in Azure specifically are much 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 better than they are for um, much much better than they are for uh, reselling hardware um, in Azure uh, in essence uh, you're if you're a CSP and you're reselling Azure I believe the margins are something like 15 to 18 percent and we've seen our customers tack on another 10 to 25 percent for cloud managed services so in essence you could be earning 20 to 35 percent uh, by reselling and managing Microsoft Azure for your clients. So choose your cloud partner. Is it is it Azure? Is it is it is it someone else? Is it AWS? Is it Google? Is it Software? Uh, put your tools in put put your tools in place. Unigma, other tools. I mean, what do you need to make sure that you can deliver effective uh, managed services? and then start delivering your services, go to market. And we could, by the way, at Unigma, we have a lot of marketing, we have a lot of expertise doing this stuff, so we could help you go to market. And a quick five minute demo. Sure, and if you don't mind me asking, sir, um, did you have some poll questions you would like Jenny to put up on the screen, either now or later? Yeah, please do. Okay. Okay, thank you. So Jenny, if uh, you could bring up uh, question number one, and we'll go through some, some polling. Uh, do you offer cloud managed services? So folks, if you could answer from the selection, appreciate it. Give them just a few more seconds. If you're just joining us, be sure to use the question capability to ask your questions which we'll um, uh, go ahead and uh, respond to at the end of the, uh, the webinar. Okay, Jenny, let's close, see where we landed. There we go, yes, at 67%. No, the third no, uh, plan on, uh, plan on uh, starting in the next six months at 33%. Those are the responses. Okay, Jenny, if you could hand back control and we'll continue sir all right excellent i'm hearing something in my building unfortunately that sounds like a, a fire alarm i'm not sure if it is or not yet but but, but if it is i might have to uh, break early but in any case let's continue and see if in yeah. hope that it's not um so i've put up a quick demonstration of unigma on my screen here i'm not going to go through anything in depth uh, but if you guys are interested in it or have questions, we could certainly talk after. Uh, but what you're seeing here is a dashboard uh, because we can show you costs and performance um, monitoring in one place. So what you're seeing here is some of our uh, actual you know, performance monitoring. Some This is our Cassandra backend. Uh, this is actually some of our costs, as you can see here, uh, AWS costs, S3, things like that. These are more costs broken out in a slightly different way. So these are dashboards. You could build as many dashboards as you want. You could share them with your customers. You can invite your customers into the system. Um, here we have a, um, a variety of different infrastructures that we support. So um, you could essentially, you know, have you see everything in one pane of glass. So AWS, Azure, and Google, as you see, all of these different infrastructures are, are in one place. You could do automation, so you could manage your cloud instances right from here, right from this pane of glass. Uh, you could get more details on, on your cloud infrastructure right from here. Uh, we, we do a bunch of different things uh, around uh, monitoring. So you can create policies, a variety of different policies from health monitoring, cost monitoring, downtime, platform, etc. And by the way, this whole platform is completely white labeled to your company's brand. So you see this logo here that could be removed. You could use your own URL even if you'd like. 
Um, analytics. So this is where we show you some cost analytics. So I talked about cost savings. How do we help our customers save the most amount of money in the cloud? So here, one quick screen will show you how to save a bunch of money like this uh, demo environment that I've got hooked up here. These are actual clouds uh, I've got hooked up to save about $4,500 per month uh, by downsizing certain instances, by turning things off, by uh, by upgrading uh, VMs to a new generation, etc. So there's a bunch of different things that can be done. Um, and there's a lot more behind this that I could show you later. Automation, so we can schedule various tasks. So for example, shut down and turn on virtual machines. Let's say that you'd like to shut them down uh, for the weekend, turn them back on, or even uh, allow uh, our software to uh, get rid of VMs that are used in like a development environment and then spin them back up again. So we have something called smart tasks that, that is event-driven automation. So, so there's a lot there. Uh, reporting. So this will sh show your customers that you're actually doing the work. So you could send a customer report. You could send an internal report to your team. Partner billing reporting, that's essentially billing. So you could send a bill to your customers and, and bill for your cloud. You could do things like uh, discount or markup, add custom line items for your managed services, uh, and do a lot more there. So this is very powerful. Um, I believe I covered everything at a high level here. So it's a very powerful tool. I, Highly recommend you guys uh, reach out to us after, and we could we could talk about it a lot more. Uh, now back to the slides here. Excuse me. All right. So just to recap, our tool is very simple to use. Uh, it's very affordable. It is unified, so you've got one tool. We integrate with Autotask, ConnectWise, and Kaseya. So if you guys use any of those, we have full integration there. Uh, we're a SaaS, 100% SaaS-based uh, company. And uh, that concludes my presentation, and happy to answer any questions. Anyone, anyone questions? there was something in chat okay all right uh, I'm back I, I for, pardon me for a moment I couldn't um, here can you hear me okay Creel yes I can okay thank you I, I guess I had a hiccup and I was just conferring with Jenny uh, Jenny confirmed that your sound was fine so the, the this one I don't have a fire alarm but I'm on an island sir <laughs> all right <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually have. Um, the funny thing is, I actually do. It, it sounds like there's a. I'm in a big building, but it sounds like kind of far away. So maybe in a in an area of uh, of the building. I'm not sure, but uh, hopefully yeah. I won't. Well, let's let's knock out a few poll questions, sir. If if you don't mind, Jenny, if you could bring up number two, I'm going to knock out a few polling questions, folks. While we're doing that, please, please, please use the questions uh, capability to, to ask your questions for today's webinar. So you have, a, you, you, you have a question on the screen. Do you currently work with these cloud providers? We'll take another second to, uh, to do it. It looks like uh, we still have people voting. I'm looking at the real time election results. Yeah, yeah, and by the way, we, we let's uh, Harry. Why, why don't we send these out? It would be great. I think people would love to see what others are doing in the community. Maybe we could send them out after. Uh, I'll take the liberty oh, yeah. of doing that, so so we can uh, you know we'll get the results and share with everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'll be on the uh, the reports, my friend, and uh, that's a, that, that's actually a really good idea. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, close the poll, Jenny. Thank you, and. 67% uh, Azure, 17% AWS, SoftLayer and Google also at 17%. Now, um, I, I have a question, if you don't mind, based on these results. What's very interesting is, oh, and I, I want to encourage you and the listeners, go to the seattletimes.com. Uh, there's an ongoing series that started Sunday called Cloud City. So you should be able to find it underneath business, but Cloud City, a series, a good, good old-fashioned investigative reporting, if you will. Really good series because we are the home of both AWS and Azure. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. But what was interesting is they're showing AWS has, as we all know, a significant head start in the real world over Azure. Uh, it's something like Azure is running about 9 or 10% usage, AWS about 41%. So 
uh, I don't know if you'd like to comment on these results because this is almost uh, inverted <laughs> from that article series, sir. Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, AWS had had a. Uh... Your comment was that, that AWS had a head start. They certainly did. I mean, I think that uh, they still have the vast three quarters of the market share in IAS. I mean, Azure is is going quick, you know, catching up quickly. Um, there's some different statistics out there. You know, it's hard to get an exact gauge uh, unless you ask. Well, it's, it's hard to gauge in general because the providers themselves have their own numbers and independent bodies have their own. Um, I've got these from, I've got my numbers from, um, uh, I think it was from Gartner, one of the Gartner reports reports earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying this is very interesting. Now, it doesn't surprise me. The SMB Nation crowd is Microsoft centric, so we would expect Azure to to perform well. Jenny, pull question number three, if you don't mind. Question number three. Are you currently a CSP with Microsoft? Folks, that's a yes or no. Jenny, close the poll, please. Uh, Carrillo, Car Car if you'd like to comment on this, 71% no. Any, any quick thoughts? Um, I'm hoping it'll be uh, it'll be the, the opposite uh, come next year <laughs> because I, I, I think that people are leaving a lot of money on the table by, by not uh, by not engaging in this I mean if you think back to office 365 prior to office 365 if, if people remember it's called BPOS I remember those days and I certainly oh, yeah. you know I certainly yeah did, I, I was not oh. one of the early adopters there but uh, but um you know and and when that changed from BPOS to Office 365, uh, the community was very skeptical. But today, I would I would say that we asked a question about, you know, are you a uh, do you work with Office 365? Do you sell Office 365? We'd have we'd have the vast majority say yes because who who does buy who continues to buy Exchange on prem? I mean, really, it, it's 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 not a feasible business model. And I think that in the next uh, really, I think next year we're going to see a dramatic shift where uh, customers are starting to utilize Azure for uh, for its service infrastructure, for its database, for its web apps, for a lot more than they are today. I I, I agree. It's it's the new new. Um, my comment on this would be, boy, that's that's a real greenfield. Uh, much like you started your comment with it. Um, there's there's a lot of upside to this and. Ooh, just saying B pause is a little bit traumatizing. But that's okay. I just uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me, I just wanted to remind <laughs> you, you know, we all forget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, uh poll question number four. Folks, keep lining up those questions. Question number four, Jenny, so we can knock these out and then uh start to address some of the uh the questions that are coming in. The question is, are you currently a reseller with AWS? Take just a second to do that. I see the results coming in. Yeah, people are voting. Thank you, people. And it looks like we've got everybody to vote. Jenny, results, please. Oh boy, good golly, Miss Molly. Uh, almost 90% no, 10% yes. Any any observations, sir, before we get to the questions? Yeah, I mean, say you know, similar to what I said about Microsoft TSP. Really, don't limit yourself to one. Uh, I know you're Microsoft centric. However, I I think there's value. I mean, AWS has Microsoft as well. They've got the full Microsoft stack, uh, Windows, SQL, uh, everything as a service or as an infrastructure. Uh, they've got everything. So, please don't limit yourself to one vendor. Have a couple in your toolbox. Uh, and uh, have have an understanding of what the two are. That way, you can cover ground, and and not your customers won't feel like you're trying to push them into a specific vendor. Uh, that's just my comment on that. Yeah, yeah. My comment is 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 this uh, that I think there exists both a, a consulting opportunity and a content opportunity. Quite frankly. 
to, to know both. And so let me start with the consulting opportunity. A friend of mine, uh, Kevin Kosas down in Phoenix, uh, the guy hits 50. He, he gets laid off from General Electric. I mean, this, these are facts. He was an IT guy at GE for about 18 years and uh, specialized in Active Directory in some other areas. So he gets, a, he gets a knock on the door after turning 50 in corporate America. He has now put himself in business and his practice uh, kind of leverages that intersection that he knows both Azure and AWS at the enterprise level. And he's uh, starting to make a good living that there's not only people that want to know the differences between the two, so compare and contrast, but then there's also clients that, that have to run both environments. And so it's actually, it, it's kind of a cool opportunity and it's, and, and on the content side, I, I think it's something we're going to explore more in, in 2017. As, as everybody knows, we just finished nine cities, good Lord, this fall that had uh, an Azure uh, theme to it, Office 365 and Azure. Uh, we appreciate the feedback we got from people. And I think, I think there's some there there that, that we can explore some of these conversations in 17 with the next 20 cities we do. So, uh, Jenny, if you could close the, uh, the poll window, let's, let's go back to the slide deck and let me go over to the questions. Hang on a second here. Here we go. We have Marsha. Thank you for attending Marsha. Marcia says, uh, to work with you, do we make our own arrangement for cloud services with a direct or indirect provider? So the question is, how, how would Marsha work with you? Yeah, so we, <clears throat> our model is not to, to, uh, to be in between the, uh, uh, the cloud service provider and the cloud vendor. Uh, we are, we're essentially a, a platform for managing the cloud, so we, we don't at this time, we don't resell. Um, we're not like a, a distributor. So I would recommend uh, either going uh, CSP direct, or I could put you in touch with a great distributor for CSP indirect. Uh, but reach out to me, and I can help uh, with either model, figure out whether or not you could qualify for direct. Uh, and then I have some great contacts at both uh, Microsoft and a distributor to uh, to get you in touch with the right people to uh, help you, uh, you know, choose the best option. Okay, cool, folks. I want to make sure that uh, this is your last opportunity to ask the the the, the questions that you have. Um, while we're waiting for those questions, I'll ask one of my own. So, where where might people uh, see you? Uh, so so for example, would you be at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference that? They, they just rebranded that. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, oh, I forget the name. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but, I forgot myself, actually. But, uh, exactly. <laughs> that yeah, says well, they didn't do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It hasn't stuck yet. Um, yeah. where, where, where might people bump into you at Ignite, at the Worldwide Partner Conference? Where, where, where do you hang out, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just, I mean, we kind of finished up the uh, the season, uh, and I don't have uh, my plans set up for the next, uh, for the next season just yet, but, uh, you know, we were, and we'll probably be again, like, we're big fans of Datto. I mean, it doesn't have much to do, honestly, with what we're doing, but we're just great friends of theirs, so we'll probably be at their conference. I think it's in Vegas this coming year. Uh, we were just at the uh, Microsoft SMB Live events. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, I I don't have a great uh, I don't have a great uh, foresight, or I haven't built out our roadmap yet for the sure. you know, for our for our events. But you keep in touch. I mean, check out our blog. I mean, we we write content. We we publish insights. I write myself. We have a few other folks that write. Uh, so check us check us out. We, we we do webinars quite often, and just reach out to me directly at any time if you want to talk. Perfect. And then uh, I, I'm not sure we caught, where are you located? I believe you're on the East Coast where it's very chilly right now. It is. The temperature is dropping as we speak, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm in Boston. You're in Boston. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I've got a, a cable news network up on the uh, mounted monitor in the background, and they said the wind chill, you know, 20, 30 below. I mean, it's unbelievable, this polar vortex that's starting to hit you guys. Um, well, with that said, folks, I am going to insist upon last call for questions. If you have questions, now is your time to, to ask them. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping to start to wrap us up. Remember, next Thursday, the 22nd, is our fourth quarter MSP analyst report. 
our last webinar of the year, I'll have a couple special guests. We're going to talk about uh, election results in a nonpartisan way. Um, so, so don't let that scare you, but there's some implications of that. We're going to talk about some economic indicators that are trending. <laughs> there, there's some really good stuff out there pointing to a robust 2017, and we're hoping that that's going to trickle down, as it were, down to the uh, the SMB sector. So always a popular webinar. Uh, looks like we're clear of the questions. Um, so, sir, uh, we will be getting you the, uh, the, the, the details so you can have a dialogue with the attendees today to follow up with them. Uh, folks, you'll also get a replay link to the webinar tomorrow. And I sure appreciate your time. Uh, Carrillo, would you like to have the final word, sir? And then we'll we'll call it good. No, thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure uh, pleasure getting this message. I really enjoy talking about this. is my, my passion, and I've been doing this a long time. So even if you're not, um, you know, if you're not necessarily looking to use the product today, please reach out. Uh, ask any questions you'd like about cloud, about managed services, about how to uh, improve or build your practice. I'm happy to answer uh, any questions, whether it relates to, to the product or not. So I'm available anytime. Okay. Well, and I, I, uh, your your enthusiasm is apparent as you speak on the uh, <laughs> speak in the webinar format, folks. Uh, one final thing: if you are in the Puget Sound region, in just a couple of hours, I'm headed out to the West Sound Technology Association Christmas Party. That's the WSTA Christmas Party up at Agate Pass, and we are going to watch the Seattle Seahawks on Thursday night football. Go Hawks! With that said. <laughs> Go Have fast. a great week. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye.